So one day my brother, who was in his first grade at that time, walks up to me and asks me a very simple question. He said, what is an exam? And I mean, how do you answer that, right? Like, what is an exam? An exam is an exam. And we all get the concept of, you know, you walk into a classroom and there's a piece of paper which has questions and you write answers to those questions and you get marks. But somehow I never got why did we do this, right? Why, like how, I didn't get it. Like why, why did I have to write exams every three months? What was it leading to? Like where did exams feature in this map of my life? But of course you can't tell that to somebody who's in grade one. So I did something that any responsible elder brother would do. I sent him to my mom. But this story of my brother not knowing what, exam, what an exam is stayed with me. Because if you think about it, all of us at some point didn't know what an exam was. All of us at some point didn't know what marks are. All of us at some point didn't have this entire idea of, you know, I always have to be first or I need to score X marks out of Y. All of these things were introduced to us as incentives. Our parents told us that you're not going to get dessert till you eat your vegetables. Our bosses told us you're not going to get your appraisal till you work well. And we told ourselves that I'm not going to eat cheese till I lose a lot of weight, right? And it never works. It works in some cases and it doesn't in others. And we thought of the exact same thing and we realized that incentives are what, it's, it's, it's a world of incentives that we live in. Our world is driven by incentives. So, when we came across the issue of garbage collection, and uh, if you have noticed this, you know, people will throw trash in every place except the garbage bin. So we were like, why, why does that happen, right? Why can't we incentivize good social behavior? So we thought about it and we said, you know what, what if we start giving out Wi-Fi for every time they trash in the bin? So we created this trash bin, and every time you trash into it, it gives you free Wi-Fi. So suddenly somebody is acknowledging your effort for keeping your area clean. And it was phenomenal. Like, people used to queue up to actually use a trash bin. <laughs> it's, it's probably the first time I've seen that happening, right? And that is the idea of incentives. Incentives are so inherent to us. They are so, so imbibed in the way we interact, in the way we socialize, in the way we talk to each other, that they are almost second nature to us. I mean, look at money, right? All of us, at some point, are pursuing money in some way. Because money is what is the default incentive in this world. So what happens is there's a system that is created around this incentive of money. The system creates money which leads to consumption, which requires money, and then it's a vicious cycle. So suddenly you start buying things that you don't need. You are stuck in a job which you don't really like because it's giving you money to buy the things that you don't actually need. And then the system just sucks you in. And the beauty of money is that it's infinite, right? So if you can just keep on earning more and more money, like I'm sure Bill Gates, who's the richest person on earth right now, looks at his bank balance and goes like, yeah, that's good, but you know, I wouldn't mind a few more million dollars. But that's the thing. So, so why are we pursuing a number that is, you know, that is infinite, that's never gonna give us satisfaction? Because no matter how much you get it, you're always gonna be stuck. But then, so what should you pursue, right? The question is, okay, so if I stop pursuing money, what else is there that I can pursue? So let's, let's think of it in a different way, right? The one thing that's common with all our lives is death. So if you think about it, the only thing which is finite in this world is your time. And it's running out literally every second. So what if we start thinking about optimizing for time? So now we are not looking to make more money. We are trying to save more time. So suddenly a lot of things change, right? Let's imagine a sci-fi world where time would literally be deducted from your life for everything that you did wrong. So let's say you watched a movie that was really bad, there goes three hours. Let's say you went for a vacation that you really didn't like, there goes a week. Let's say you became an engineer when you didn't really want to become an engineer, there goes your life. And the funny part is this is not even a sci-fi world, this is literally how time works. So. If you think about it, you know, so why aren't we optimizing for time? Because that makes more sense, right, compared to money. But somehow we really like quantifying things. I mean, the modern culture is built around quantifying things. It's around putting numbers to things, right? And it makes sense. It's easier to incentivize numbers. It's easier to tell a kid that you need to come first 
it's very difficult to tell a kid that you are unique in your own little way and you are amazing the way you are and just be who you are because you can't explain that to a kid. What you can explain to a kid is, if you want a toffee, eat your vegetables. So I have one question here, right? So let's, let's take a step back and let's think of the innovations that we have seen. Do you think Einstein wrote theory of relativity because he wanted a promotion? Do you think Mozart, you know, when he was composing the symphonies, in his head he's like, I better get an A-plus in my music class. Do you think Van Gogh cut off his ear because he wanted to save time? So, so these guys weren't really optimizing for time, neither were they optimizing for money, clearly. So what were they in pursuit of? I would conjecture they were in pursuit of knowledge. And that's another way to pursue, right? That's another thing to pursue in your life. That's another incentive. Your incentive is then knowledge. So what happens when you start incentivizing knowledge, when you start incentivizing curiosity? Suddenly, money is not your aim, time is not your aim. Your aim is to just go deeper into things that you're interested in. So you're suddenly gonna start doing things that really drive you, right? That you're really passionate about, things that really speak to your soul. And I would conjecture that this will definitely lead to more innovation and more exploration as well. But the thing is, right, it's all these incentives that I spoke about, they all exist in today's world. And we have people who are pursuing these incentives. And the incentive could be anything. It need not only be time, money, and curiosity. It could be something as simple as happiness. It could be something as simple as satisfaction, right? As simple as peace of mind. Because the best things in life cannot be quantified. You cannot quantify happiness. You cannot quantify love. You cannot quantify peace. But somehow, somehow, all of us, or I would say at least a majority of us, are in pursuit of money by default. And I think that happens because we don't take a step back, we don't stop, we don't realize the incentives that we are actually going towards. In fact, a lot of us don't even realize that we're actually getting incentivized. We just think that we are doing things because that is the way things are done. So I, I would like to leave you guys with this. The next time you're thinking about your life or you're thinking about anything, just take a step back. Just take a step back and ask this question. Am I choosing my incentive or is my incentive choosing me? Thank you. Thank you.